Hey there, welcome back to She Speaks Life. I'm Jamie Elizabeth and I have a treat for you. Maybe you grew up watching the hit movie series Spy Kids, or like me, your kids watched it multiple times. Well, today I'm bringing you Alexa Pena Vega, who you may know her as Carmen Cortez in the film Spy Kids. Alexa and her husband Carlos, who you may recognize in Big Time Rush, have a YouTube channel they do together called La Vida Pena Vega and are the parents of two sons, Ocean and Kingston, and one baby girl, Rio. You may hear their cute little voices in the background as I chat with Alexa about her faith story with God and about both her books that her and Carlos wrote and published together. And Alexa's first book called What If Love Is The Point? Living For Jesus In A Self-Consumed World is about the things Alexa faced growing up in the acting life and how she stopped chasing after the worldly desires and found a personal relationship with Jesus that ultimately fulfilled her. She was also in Dancing with the Stars, and she talks about how fun that was competing with her hubby, Carlos. And in her second book we cover is called Ocean's World, an island tale of discovery and adventure. This children's book is so adorable as the characters, her sons, go on a hunt for a shell on the island of Hawaii. Along with the story are some educational facts about what they encounter on their adventure, making it a fun learning experience and a great Christmas gift for any child in your life. Alexa and Carlos are busy actors and I'm so grateful for Alexa to take the time and share with us everything in this conversation. So here's my guest, Alexa Penavega. Hi, Alexa. Welcome to She Speaks Life. I am so happy you are here today. I can't wait to talk about all things. You got a couple books and your own personal journey in faith. So welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I was looking into where you came from, California, being an actress and spy kids. That was big. I, I know my kids were like, oh my gosh, yes, we know her. And um, so before we dive into like your personal story, how you got started as an actress and how you turned your life over to the Lord, I would love for you to share your favorite scripture verse, because I know that we can really get to know somebody by them sharing mm. their favorite life verse. Okay. So um, it's in Corinthians. I always laugh because I'm like, I don't actually know. It's Corinthians 9, I think. <laughs> 21 or 23. Uh, yeah. I should really find out. But it's the first scripture I ever memorized. And it happens to be one that I just, it's really just stuck with me forever. Um, and it says, do you not know that in a race, all runners run, but only one gets the prize run in such a way as to get the prize. Now, it's easy, of course, in our materialistic, jaded world that we would actually think that the prize is like something of like material value, but the prize is the kingdom, right? And we're all mm -hmm. in a race, all of us, whether you know it or not, you're in a race. And it's such a reminder to me to really walk with God. I am in this race with God and I want when people look at me. I want it to look like I'm in a race with God. I don't want to be confusing for other people. I don't want people yeah. to think that I, I guess for me, it's just like, this is my race and, and it is for the kingdom. So I want it to look like yeah. I'm running a race towards the kingdom. Yes, totally. Just being an example. And I think that's so important. And you know, there's a lot of people watching you guys, you and Carlos. Carlos is an actor too. And so, you know, just being that light for Jesus in the public eye, yeah. it just, it means a lot because there's a lot of people just watching and, you know, that's good and bad, but you know what? You can make it into a privilege, right? Mm -hmm. It's an honor to be able to do that. So It is. I mean, it's so yeah. funny because I know there especially in our industry, there's so many people that are like, well, wouldn't it be nice to be famous and all this stuff? And it's like, you know what? We all have platforms for wherever you are. You literally have a platform and every single day you get a choice to do what you want with your platform. You can either speak life or be a light in this world, 
or you know you can take and and i'm just hoping that you know with just the little bit that we do we can help inspire people to live mm-hmm. in a way that just shines a light on this world. I enjoyed reading your memoir, What If Love is the Point? Living for Jesus in a Self-Consumed World. And like we said before, you're an actress, you were in many films, and let's just kick it off with how did acting begin in your life? So when I was four, um, my mom, so my mom was a model growing up. So I always went to different shoots with her and she happened to have a shoot or something in California. Um, and her close friends were also in California at the same time. So we all just went out and I know that I was just one of those kids that you could tell that I was probably going to be an actress or something like very outgoing, loved reciting lines from movies, (laughs) stuff like that. Um, and when my godmother's daughter who's uh, about 10 years older than me, they went to go meet with their agent. I was with them and the agent was like, I don't represent kids, but I really feel like there's something about you. So I want to try this out. And of course, you know, I'm four. I don't really know enough about that. I'm just like, yes, I want to be an actress. Like, Mm -hmm. yes, I want to do this. So she ends up calling her friend um, who was the casting director of a big TV show back in the day and said, hey, there's a baby on the show. That baby needs to grow up. And that girl, <laughs> I, I know exactly who could play her. And that's literally how it all came about. I went into an audition. I met Burt Reynolds and he offered me the job in the room. And it was the coolest yeah. thing ever because that never happens. Yeah. And that happened when I was four. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's a great story. That's thing. <laughs> Yeah, totally. I know. Well, you hear it all the time. It's connections. It's connections. My daughter's an aspiring actress herself, and she got accepted BFA at TCU in here in Texas. It's a university in Fort Worth. And so, yeah, she's got that same, you know, just that natural talent. She, she was little, and you could just tell she's she's got it. She's got the it factor there. So, so, good. so I know... Yeah. So I know in Hollywood, there's the good and the bad, right? There, it's not all glamorous. And I think especially we see as the audience watching, you know, film or, or TV actresses battling eating disorders, which I think is a common thing because it's either, you know, you, you, you can't be skinny enough, right? And then now we're seeing it today. It's almost extreme, right? Like unhealthy. So it, yeah. it's like, okay, what is going on? So Hollywood um, when I was reading your book, find a balance. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. So I was reading your book. I was reading that you had an eating disorder. Were you just in that place where you just felt like I need to look you know, better and better. And that's kind of how it started because of the industry that you're in? Yes. Well, one, like personally, you know, I didn't want to not be happy with how I looked. Um, But then having the pressure of studios and, and producers behind you really pushing and, and, you know, saying things in a way that, Weight is a difficult subject for everybody. And you can even hear it today with how we promote what is healthy, right? Um, Mm -hmm. But as a 15-year-old, you're still really figuring things out and navigating things. And it's it's in Mm -hmm. itself an emotional weight for a 15-year-old to try to carry. And I think, you know, knowing what I know now about health, about food, about how our body works, like just a simple understanding nutrition, I can't wait to pour that into my kids because it gives you such a different relationship with food um, and Mm -hmm. a different outlook on your body and your physical health. We didn't have, one, really these tools. People weren't really talking about health in this way. They were just talking about how you look. Do you look skinny or do you look fat? Like really those were the only options. That was it. And, um, and for us, it was, you have to look skinny. This was when, you know, Lindsay Lohan and Nicole Richie were on the cover of every Us Weekly 
looking like super anorexic. And sure, they were saying they look anorexic, but in a way, they were also kind of like praising it because they got so much Mm -hmm. attention. And though they were the ones getting like campaigns and opportunities and everywhere you looked skinny, it was all about being skinny. So of course, naturally, everything else falls into that place in the entertainment world along with like Mm -hmm. young girls watching. And I was just a young girl watching what was happening. Um, I wasn't surrounded at the time probably by the best people to encourage me or to give me maybe educational um, nutritional information that I could have used. So instead, I went to the extreme and I ended up falling into an eating disorder that didn't just wreak havoc for that year. It was something I battled on and off for that next six years. And it took over my life. Like it just completely took it over. Yeah. Because in a sense, you feel like it's the one thing I can control, right? Yeah. I had complete control over it. I was also getting the instant gratification of I can eat whatever I want, but not having the repercussions or at least not believing I had the repercussions, not understanding the life, the full like lifetime of repercussions that I would then be dealing with. So, you know, for instance, you know, I knew that it could hurt your teeth. I didn't know it would like absolutely destroy your teeth. So I didn't know like how badly it was for your teeth. So I destroyed my teeth. Um, It took me a minute to get pregnant. And at first Mm -hmm. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get pregnant. Um, There were just so many things. I just, I destroyed my body Mm -hmm. for a long period of time. Uh And I really do believe it was a miracle that I was able to kind of come back and out of it. I know living in Hollywood and I think just living in general, just without the Lord, it's just easy to just do the parting and just living life the way you want. And, you know, at that point, like what made you be like, okay, I'm done living this life that I've been living that's just leaving me unsatisfied and empty. When well, did you find your faith? I have to say, okay, so my mom instilled a heart for Jesus when we were really young, but again, it was a very Sunday morning version of Christianity. There really was not any depth or roots to it, but I craved those conversations with God. So even as a kid, I would talk to God all the time without even really understanding what Christianity was about or what it was that I believed. Like I just felt this deep connection to God without even knowing why, right? And and I think that was right. cool. That was such a blessing because yeah. I, I really helped build to where I am today. Um, so then going through with the eating disorder, I would actually pray to God. I'd just be like, God, please take this away from me. Like I don't want to be doing this. I'm ashamed of what I'm doing, but also like it does bring me joy and I don't want it to bring me joy. I want it to be gone. Right. But I prayed this for for quite a long time. It wasn't this overnight thing, but I look at what Paul says, I believe it's in Ephesians when he's talking about the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, Mm -hmm. your belt of truth. And he goes on and he, he says, you have your shield of faith. And that was something that I grew up with. I had faith but I didn't have my sword because that was the word of God. And Mm. I didn't quite understand the word of God. I wasn't really reading on my own yet. I wasn't diving into the Bible quite yet. So as soon as I got that sword, it was like my demons became defeated. I was able to like destroy. And it wasn't me, obviously it's like God, but um, I was able to destroy the chains, the, the junk that was holding me back. And, and it, it, it literally happened after I started diving into the word. That was yeah. my turning point. Um, and it goes to show you, mm-hmm. like, when you become deeply rooted into something, you can have, you know, all the bells and whistles, but it's not until you, like, dive into the roots that God has given you where you mm-hmm. are able to see the fruit of it. Yeah, so true. Okay, so how did you meet Carlos? Through mutual friends or on the set? How did that all start? So I met Lowe's. We were both at lower points in our lives. And we had a mutual friend named Andrew who had actually tried to set us up, but the timing didn't work out and we didn't think much of it. Um, But I didn't know who he was. Like he didn't know that I was in the industry, nothing. Like we just went about our lives. And 
we were both at a low point in our lives and we got invited to our friend's Bible study. He'd been hosting a Bible study for quite some time and I'd finally reached a point. He'd asked me so many times to go and for whatever reason, this was the time that I was like, yes, I'm going to go. I happen to be in town. So yeah, I'm going to go. And I showed up and that is literally where I met Carlos. And every hangout from that point on was either at Bible study or at church or some mm. sort of like function that had yeah. to do with our faith. And that's what mm. our entire relationship was built on and founded on. You know, before mm. Carlos, I actually had been married. I went through a divorce. Um, mm. And, you know, we have a very cordial relationship. We just did not, but my ex and I, like, we just did not work. And, and also like our foundation was not built on a faith-filled foundation. It was not built on biblical values. Or it, when, when you don't have that biblical foundation, um, it's hard to navigate life, let alone like yeah. a marriage. I And, you know, it's so funny because I go back to that verse where we're in a race, right? So if me and my husband are in the same race together, we could both be running in the same direction. And it doesn't matter the chaos that's going on around us or anything that's trying to cause division, we're both in the same race running in the same direction. When you're not in line with your values and your morals, the race that you're running in, you're running in two opposite directions. So yeah. of course, yeah. division is going to break you. Of course, the first sign of like something that could be difficult is going to just like take you out because yeah. you are both mm -hmm. not in the same race. So true. Okay. So I read that you guys, I have to mention this, Dancing with the Stars, because <laughs> we all watch that show. Oh, yes. We absolutely love it. And I love how you're like, Carlos was just so natural and didn't even have to think about the choreography. And true. so what was the best part of Dancing with the Stars? Holy moly. You know, it really pulled me out of my shell. I would say it was the beginning of pulling me out of my shell a little bit. I don't think people look at me and think that I'm in a shell, um, but I am. I really am. Yeah. I've lived so much of my life as a people pleaser and it's taken me a long time and a lot of like working through. And like, I still will fall into that naturally of like being a people pleaser that I'm not actually coming out of my shell. I'm just doing whatever makes other people happy. And that's kind of, right. I think, an actor trait. That's just something we do, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that show really just kind of pulled something out of me because you are in the most vulnerable state. Also, I never thought I would be talking about my eating disorder. And that was the first place I ever talked about having mm -hmm. had one. And yeah. it actually felt like it was terrifying at first, but it was also really relieving. And in a way, it like continued to break the chains of an eating disorder. Like I had no idea that I was still holding on to chains. The chains that I still had, it, it was honestly that fear that people would find out that I had an eating disorder. I didn't want them to look at me as like this girl who once had an eating disorder because I was still mm -hmm. just Alexa. Even though I went through that, I was still me. Like I don't want that to be my identity. But it was almost more my identity the more I held on to it and kept it my secret as opposed to letting the world know that that was something that happened, but God healed me. And I didn't, I didn't go to a rehab place. I didn't go to a facility. Like it was literally just me and God and God miraculously yeah. pulling me through that. Mm -hmm. And, and that was it. Like I, I don't ever have to look back and really being able to speak that, it was as if I like crushed the enemy. So I'd say that was probably the yeah. best thing that came out of Dancing with the Stars. Mm, praise God. I love that. I'm so glad I asked that question. That was no, great. Thank you. This is um, so <laughs> yeah, like there was a whole story there. I love it. Testimony. Okay, so you have three adorable children, two boys. <laughs> <love that>. one... <laughs> yes, yeah, so we could we can hear them in the background. Um and you live on a boat. I mean, how awesome. But then I think everyone's just going, what? Three small kids all under the age of five on a boat. I'm going, they must have had to learn how to swim early in life. And you guys, I guess, hop from Hawaii and Florida, right? Depending yeah. on. Yeah, kind of depending yeah, on where you are. Um, this has been a busier season for us. So 
being in Florida has actually been a lot easier than if we were like flying all the way back to Hawaii, uh, just because of the season that we're in. So this is kind of home base Mm -hmm. right now. Um, you know, it's, it's a passion. Carlos grew up sailing. He got me into Mm -hmm. it when we got together and we would go on all these sailing trips. And it was something that we thought we would get back into after our kids have kind of left the nest. Um, or at least when they were older and like everything, we, we just like to try things a different, a little differently. Um, yeah, <laughs> we That's thought, awesome. you know what, we're just going to go for it. Like, I know it makes no sense with the season that we're in, how busy we are to have our five, three and one year old go on a boat with us and have these sailing adventures. But we follow a bunch of sailing channels on YouTube that we really, really love. Nice. And And something that was really cool, there's one family, they're called Sailing Satara. They're also a faith-filled family. um, They've been sailing together, I think, for like six years now. Um, Their marriage had kind of hit like a rocky point. They were no longer happy with where they were. The family was kind of just like there was a lot of tension. And they made a decision as a family because they asked the kids to – sell everything and live on a boat and sail the world. And they did that. And they said it was the best decision they ever made because it kept everybody close. It put things into perspective. They were able to travel the world. Um, So Mm -hmm. many fruitful things came from it that we wanted that. And, you know, in our industry, it moves so quickly. There's so much happening all the time. Um, Also, our industry is not a very faith-built place. So we, whenever we're not working or in it, yeah. Not that we try to go as far away as possible, but for us, we're just like, we want to reconnect with God. How do we do that the best? And honestly, like yeah. being in the middle of the ocean, <laughs> you kind of only can rely yeah. on God. Oh, totally. And the memories that you're making with your kids. Oh. I mean, we all know growing up, what are the memories we have? It's the vacation or it's the yeah. adventure that we're having with our parents, right? Totally. Yeah. We always laugh. You know, we're both, we're both like, country barefoot people at heart and um you know when our kids wake up in the morning they the first thing they do is like run outside pee off the side of the boat and then throw a fishing line in the water (laughs) and i always crack up because i was like oh Ah, these other boats in the marina probably don't like us very much but our kids are going to remember that forever (laughs) oh that's great it sounds like a fantastic lifestyle (laughs) So d- did the hurricane affect you um, where you're so, at in Florida? So you know what? We were really fortunate with where we are that we only had winds, crazy rain, um, and some tornadoes, but we were safe. So we actually stayed on the boat the whole okay. time. Um, however, oh my you know, obviously there were parts of Florida that were super devastated. Um, and we work with the Salvation Army. And I know everybody hears about the Salvation Army, but – you really don't know until you volunteer with them just how much they do Mm -hmm. because they don't boast about it and they don't boast about it at all. They are so humble in how they give. It's, it blew me away, but we, we volunteered Mm -hmm. with the Salvation Army. We went down to, uh, or over to Port Charlotte and, um, we were serving meals and talking with people and Every day they serve 7,000 meals down there. Um, The devastation was so bad. Um, You know, people still don't have electricity. There's the fact that they're still serving meals Mm -hmm. because people don't have access to obviously refrigeration to even keep their meals cool or to heat their meals other than like, Mm -hmm. you know, their grill and whatnot. Um, And then the people who can't afford it because they literally lost everything. So all of their money is going to these hotels or, you know, everything that they can mm-hmm. scram scramble together and there was this one man mm-hmm. um and this, the people at the salvation army told me they're like you'll probably meet one person that's gonna like break you but it, it happens every time mm-hmm. you know there's a new volunteer like mm-hmm. there's that one person that sticks with you forever and i met a man mm-hmm. he must have been 80 years old his name was jim and he drove up in his Aww. car and he was a little too old to just kind of get out and come to the truck so i ran over I ran over to his car and I said, hi there. Um, how can I help you? How many meals do you need today? And he just, he stopped. He was like, wait, I, so, so you are serving meals. And I was like, yeah, how many do you want? Oh. And he just started crying. 
And I'm like, oh, wow. oh no, oh no. Like, how do I, how do I pour into this guy? I don't know what to do. Like my heart yeah. wasn't prepared yeah. to see this. And he goes, how many? I can have more than one. And he just starts to sob and I lost it. I was just like, sir, you can have as many as you need. And of course I'm crying and I'm asking how I can pray for him and yeah. how we could be there for him. And, you know, we get the meals and we put it in the car and he's, he's just like, I don't, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve all this help. And oh, I'm just like goodness. blown away that this old guy mm -hmm. couldn't believe the generosity of just like mm -hmm. people wanting to serve him and love on him. But then like him feeling yeah. undeserving of people serving and loving on him. And I'm like, man, our God is so mm -hmm. awesome. We all are undeserving yeah. of that. And yet yeah. he pours into us and he loves on us and he frees us like constantly. And I just, it, it, it broke me that a man at that age could feel that way. And, and it just puts so many yeah. things in perspective for our family. Um, I know that's not yeah. the question you were asking, but, but like the, no, the, answer, the short this. answer no. was, yeah, the short answer was yeah. no, it didn't affect us, but it did affect a lot of people not too far from us. So we all went to volunteer as a family and, so, uh, yeah. you know, they always say like, when you serve, like, sure, you go there to bless other people, but you're the one who walks away, like more blessed than anyone because of what you get Completely. from serving. And my kids were serving. We just Completely. served together as a whole family and it was, it was the greatest experience we could have had as a family. Like, I highly suggest yeah. you guys get involved in any way that you can, anybody listening. Yeah. I mean, that's what life's about, right? Glorifying oh, God yeah. is serving others. Like, yes. I mean, you know, and it was such a devastating hurricane. And uh, I we vacationed there a lot uh, down at the Keys. We've been to Naples. We've been to the other side, Fort Lauderdale. But my husband loves fishing and we go down the keys and they get hit a lot. And so, uh, but nothing like that. I mean, this was very devastating. Well, so I mean, always, Florida always has like big potential hurricanes yeah. coming. So like when you hear that so often, you just become like kind of jaded to it to where you go, ah, it's, it's fine. It's not going to touch us. Yeah. Um, and, and it's tough. It, it's right. not that the news is so wrong. You just never know. <laughs> you can't really predict the weather. You can only do so much. Yes, exactly. Okay, let's talk about your newest book, Ocean's World, yes. right? And I absolutely love this. This is so adorable. What made you guys write this book? How did this idea come about? So I have to actually give credit to my husband because he is, he's the genius behind this. Um, I had, <laughs> had Ocean yeah. and we were trying to find things that we liked as parents to have him watch. And, you know, we were a little older for Dora the Explorer, but it was something we were familiar with. So we're like, okay, we'll have him watch Dora. So we're watching Dora all together. And he's like, yeah, this needs to be better. He's like, not that Dora's bad, but <laughs> this is old. Yeah. We can do better. Let's make something better. And I started laughing. I was like, so you want to make a kid's show? He's like, heck yes. I want to elevate this. Like we can make something so much cooler than Dora. Yeah. So that's kind of where the idea sprouted. Um, and yeah. the idea started with like a television show. And then when we were writing our memoir, they asked us if we had any other book ideas. And Carlos goes, actually, I know this. I don't know if you guys have like a kid's section, but we have this idea for a TV show that we figured we would turn into a book first. And they loved it. So they gave us the opportunity to write it. And, you know, as you know, like we split our time between Maui and Florida. Uh, so this first book um, is kind of just paying homage to the island. You get to learn a lot about um, the, the different kind of island facts there. Um, what we love about it is, you know, we want our kids to learn. But a lot of times, like when something is a little too focused on learning, your kids zone out. So we wanted to just do yeah. these, like, tell a story, but do these little fun facts, these little kind of like blips of information that your kids can soak in. They're not too long. It's really quick. And Ocean loves it. That's actually his favorite part to read. We always crack up because like we can read the whole story, but he's like, no, what's the fun fact? How high can a dolphin jump? How far do whales yeah. migrate? Like he wants to know all of these questions or the answers to all these questions. Um, so, yeah. so we've had fun kind of putting that together. 
and and to be able to make it our family and our kids i mean they think it's like the the bee's knees yeah. it's the coolest thing in the whole wide oh, world totally and to have the book named after him ocean yeah. right oh, my and my poor child kingston he's like so when does Kingston's yeah, book where's come my out? book? Like, oh no. Yeah, yeah, buddy, your book is coming. Your book is coming next, okay? <laughs> yeah, Kingston, and then you'll need Rio. I know. Yeah. We were like maybe Kingston's kingdom, Rio's room. Like we're like brainstorming over right. here. Uh, but something really totally. cool. Totally. So again, I have to just keep giving props to my husband because he really is – he's a genius. That's why I married him. Um, he got together. So my husband's in a band called Big Time Rush. They're a boy band. They're super fun. Um, and they yeah. write some really great music. They actually teamed up and wrote a theme song to this book. It is adorable. It's so sweet. And then we have our friend Mafio making an appearance on it as well. So it's a Spanglish song all about Ocean's World. Um and if you buy the audiobook, you actually get the song because you can't the song isn't anywhere. You can't you can't find it except if you pre ordered the book or if you get the audio version of the book. Oh awesome. That's good to know. I know yeah. I loved it is written really well. Yeah. I love the fun facts. I was yeah, even learning some yeah. things. Oh yeah. Well <laughs> I'm going, I mean, Oh, I didn't know that. Well, because we didn't know these things. So we're like looking it up and going, oh, that's cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> so as we're writing, we're learning at the same time. But also, again, like my, all my kids were born in Hawaii. Well, Ocean wasn't, but we moved when he was four months old. So we really also wanted to throw a lot of the Hawaiian culture in there as far as like how they say things. Like instead of just calling a turtle a turtle, we call it a honu and explain what that means in Hawaiian. And um yeah. it's just such a part of our life mm -hmm. that we wanted to kind of be able to implement that. And then, you know, we're writing the next book and that mm -hmm. takes place on a catamaran in Argentina. So we're able to get the boat in there, but then also our Hispanic roots yeah. in there as well. Oh, so good. Yeah. I mean, when I was reading it, even I was getting brought into Hawaii. I've been to Maui before and I'm like, wow, this book just makes you want to live there. <laughs> like, this is Thank so you. nice. It's, so it's really it just awesome takes you, such a special place. Yeah, it's just beautiful. And this book just takes you on an island journey. That's what it does from beginning to the end. And I absolutely love it. Okay, so you got a multi-picture deal with Hallmark. So tell us about that. Is that with writing, producing, or everything? It's kind of a little bit of everything. Um, they've been they've listen. Hallmark has been such a big part of our family for years. Um, one of the reasons why we love working mm -hmm. with them is um, we keep having kids, and they keep letting us bring our kids to set and hang out together. And they've also That's allowed great. us to keep our core values in all the movies we make for them. So. Um, while they may not necessarily be Christian movies, all our values and our morals are in the projects that we make with Hallmark. And that's super, super important to us. Um, yeah. We haven't had to veer or mm -hmm. bend for anybody and, and you know, we wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And they've really, instead yeah. of like running the other direction, they've really been like, great, let's figure out how to make projects that you're proud of, that align with your your beliefs and tell great stories. And I so appreciate that about that network. They've really been allowed us to kind of take the reins creatively and tell the stories that we want to tell. Mm -hmm. um, it's a fantastic team that they've put together over there for us. So we were able to produce, kind of help come up with stories along with, you know, act in the movies. Yeah. Oh, so fun. Okay, I love to end our time with a takeaway. Is there something that you can leave our listener with to either ponder on or take action in? And then let's hear where we can get the book and the audio book and connect with you. Love it. Okay, so um, takeaway would be this. Your best testimony is your consistency in how you live for Christ. Um, a lot of times, people who are not believers, they're going to look to the brightest light in the room when they need a leg up or when they need advice. And they see when people are on a roller coaster ride in their faith. If you can be a consistent person in your walk, that speaks 
volumes to who God is and what the kingdom stands for. So just be real, as consistent as you can be in your walk. So good. The book should be available anywhere books are sold. Um, obviously, for all you online shoppers, you can order it from Barnes and Noble online or on Amazon. And I'm sure there are a few other online retailers that have it as well. But I'm not as privy as my husband is to that, so I'm just gonna leave it there. Yeah, so good. Well, I love the illustrations in oh, your book, she did Ocean's such World. Oh, good job, Kirsten killed it. She's fantastic. Oh, love it, and I think that's important, obviously, with a children's book. You know, and there to are have some- that. There are some slightly different textures, which was really important important for Lowe's to have. He's like, I want kids to be able to feel the seashell. This whole book is about finding this important seashell. And um, he's like, I want it to be different than the rest of the book. I want the kids to feel it. I want them to know that this is stand out. So he was very particular about like what it felt like and what it looked like. And I'm very proud of him because he really put his heart yeah. into the little details with this book. And obviously we did this together, yeah. but I just love seeing him care so deeply and dive into it. Right. Put in his creativity. Yeah. Into it. Love it. Well, thank you, Alexa, for coming on thank here and me. us getting to know you more and your story. I mean, it's just so interesting. We love to hear how people grow in their faith and places that, you know, it's not as what you're saying, faith filled. And how do you stand firm on your, with your faith, right? As you go through that, what you love to do is act and be on films. And I appreciate you and just many blessings to you and Carlos and your family. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for your prayer prior to this interview. It was really, yes. really beautiful. I, I, I wish that I could start every interview like that. <laughs> well, maybe you can just start it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to make it happen. You'd be like, hi guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, actually. Uh, well, thank you, Alexa. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening today, and I trust that God has encouraged you through this story. Did you know this podcast is on YouTube? Hop on there and subscribe, and you can see a live recording of each episode. And for more information on this ministry and to access free downloads, please visit my website at jamieelizabeth.com. That's J-A-Y-M-E elizabeth.com. And let's connect beyond this podcast by going to my Instagram handle, Jamie Elizabeth, She Speaks Life, or Facebook. Until next time, my friend, I hope God reveals himself through your own life story.